Can you share with us what a typical day would look like for you eating? Of course, I'm susceptible to tem- temptations, and that's why I look into all of these things. So I'm not going to say that I'm I'm perfect, but uh, definitely this is what I try to do, and it might be better to say this is what I try to do. I certainly try to miss breakfast. Fasting is an important aspect for me, and I like to try to live by two meals a day. Um, I like to exercise in the morning, and I used to cycle to work for four years in a row until I had a bike accident about a couple of months ago. So uh, I went to work. It was a 10-mile ride, about a 40-minute ride to work and 40-minute ride back. So I'd get my exercise that way. My first meal of the day is at around 1 o'clock, 1 or 2. And usually it's in the hospital, and I go for a protein option because one of the things that we never really touched on is that Uh, In addition to sugar and refined carbs, one of the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous aspects of modern life is seed oils or vegetable oils. So it almost eliminates me from eating anything that is cooked outside. All restaurants use vegetable oil. So when I go to the hospital, I'm pretty much limited to one or two protein options. You know, some beef, some chicken, uh, some fish. And, you know, I, of course, if any, anything that is breaded, anything that is deep fried is completely a no-no because it will be filled with vegetable oils. And that's one of the biggest dangers. So I'd get some food out there. and But my predominant meal would be when I reach home at around 6, 7. And that would be when I would either cook beef or lamb or chicken. And then depending about on the amount of exercise and depending on the day, I would have some carbs. Um, I have a friend um, who is a vegetarian who has improved his blood sugars, A1C, from 9.3 to 5.3 by being um, an, uh, a good investigator and uh, by preparing vegetarian food that is low in carbs. So he gives me uh, some advice, uh, cauliflower rice, cabbage, uh, lupin flour, um, so uh, those are the things that I am trying to uh, uh, incorporate in terms of vegetarian patients that I get. I, I refer the, them to him. And so I would have some carbs. I would say, depending on the day, I would have between 100 to 150 grams of carbs. Like on Saturday and Sunday, when I would do like a three, four hour bike ride, um, I don't see the benefit of being low carb in that situation. In fact, it could be perhaps a detriment. This right here is my favorite protein powder, the 100% grass-fed bone broth protein from Paleo Valley. It comes in three flavors, unflavored chocolate and vanilla. The chocolate and vanilla you can just mix with water. They taste incredible just like that. And I like to take the unflavored, scoop it in my black coffee, mix it in, I barely taste it, but I'm getting that collagen and protein boost. These protein powders have been third-party tested for over 40 different herbicides and pesticides. They've come back negative. There's no chemicals or solvents used in the processing, just water. As a viewer of the show, click the link in the description to save 15% off this protein today. Again, this is my favorite protein. I know you're going to love it. Do you notice a difference in performance, say on the bike, when you when you try and go low-carb those days versus higher? Yes, I think it depends on the athlete, and perhaps I'm not that good an athlete. So for me, um, for sure, but I I have several of uh, my colleagues who are on the bike who come see me professionally, (coughs) and in them I see that they can get away with a low-carb diet because um, their their fat burning happens at uh, higher and higher uh, heart rates. So in other words, even at 85, 90% heart rate, they're predominantly fat burning. 
Um, I am perhaps not in that category. Now, I have not done any um, formal experimentations with uh, um, with VO2 max or with respiratory exchange ratios to figure that out. But like, if I am on a group ride uh, with the fast group with the racing team, and my heart rate is running into the 160s and have average heart rate at the end of the ride of about 135, 140 for three to four hours. If I don't consume enough carbs, I will definitely have a very poor day on the bike. Got it. So the more carbs you are, uh, the, the, the higher the intensity of exercise that you're doing, you definitely would have to consume more carbs. For most individuals, now there are some individuals in whom they get fat burning even at very high heart rates, um, but you have to figure that out yourself. Okay. Last question for you. I know we got to part ways here. You mentioned a few minutes back magnesium, and it sounds like you're a fan of taking that supplement. Talk about that and other supplements people might want to consider. I take only two supplements. I take magnesium and I take vitamin D. I take vitamin D with K2 um, through all the winter months, um, which would be starting sometime in October and ending sometime in March. And then I vary my vitamin D intake based on the level of exposure I have to midday sun. If I have a lot of exposure to midday sun, then why do I why do I need a supplement? I I try not to take it at, on those days. Um, I do take magnesium, uh, and I think older people should take magnesium. Magnesium is reportedly very uh, deficient in our diet, and I find uh, two benefits of magnesium in me uh, and in my patients. So. In me, the reason I take it is that it reduces cramps on the bike. The second thing is that I think it helps me sleep better. Um, in my patients, the predominant reason for giving magnesium is to reduce the risks of irregular heartbeats. Uh, a lot of people are older. They have uh, heart disease that puts them at higher risk of atrial fibrillation and premature beats and magnesium is one of the ways to reduce that. Um, not a fan of fish oils. Um, I think fish oils are best obtained by eating uh, sashimi or tuna <laughs> or uh, salmon because fish oils get rapidly oxidized. I think processing of fish oils is a uh, concern of mine because the amount of oxidation and aldehydes in commercially available fish oils is probably very high. Um, I'm impressed by the data on EPA, um, the so-called Basipa study. But that study has not been corroborated by another study and by nature, I'm very suspicious of the pharmaceutical industry putting out data truthfully. So if somebody comes to me and Vasipa or EPA is a kind of a fish oil, and if they are on high doses of EPA or Vasipa, then I don't try to actively take them off of it because the data from that study is impressive. Um, it is very expensive. And uh, since it's very expensive, uh, I don't prescribe it myself. And many insurance companies don't cover it. I'm not a fan of any of the other supplements. Many people take ginseng, vitamin C, vitamin E, I or multivitamins. I really don't see a need for those. I think you're just wasting a lot of your resources that you could put into better nutrition that you can buy, better food that you can buy, or other things you can enjoy. All right. So really minimalistic. Vitamin D, K2, and magnesium. When it, com the when it comes to the magnesium, is there a certain type you like in dosage? Yeah. Uh, 
the magnesium should be glycinate or taurate, chelated magnesium, basically, because that's the one that gets absorbed. Magnesium oxide magazine, uh, is not something that gets absorbed well and or magnesium sulfate. So I, I try to stay away from those. Those are more remedies for constipation because that's not something that gets absorbed. In terms of dosage, I would say, I'm, I must say that magnesium is not a necessary component for everybody to take. So if a young person comes, they don't have any palpitations, they don't have any cramps, um, they don't have any sleep issues, I'm not going to push magnesium on them. But if you have any of those and you want to see whether it helps you, then I would say take 250 milligrams either once or twice a day. And you mentioned for you, one of the reasons you take it is for sleep. Do you take it before bed or when do you take it? it? Both before bed and in the morning. Got it. Because it helps with my cramps too. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. And people are getting more comfortable in saying that a high LDL cholesterol in the setting of metabolic health is not something that needs to...